Starting off with number 10, Ethan Slater. Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater allegedly went on multiple double dates with ex-spouses Dalton Gomez and Lily J while carrying on their own romance and were so sloppy about hiding the relationship on Wicked set that everyone in the cast knew. Ariana is currently dating Wicked co-star Ethan, who recently filed for divorce from wife Lily, with whom he shares an 11-month-old son. The Thank You Next singer's marriage to Dalton fell apart when she moved to London to star alongside Ethan in December. Ariana and Dalton had multiple double dates with Ethan at Lily. Ariana Grande and boyfriend Ethan have been looking incredibly intimate months before the relationship was made public and the couple's surprise romance was revealed to the world just a few weeks ago. Days after it was announced that Ariana had split from Dalton, her husband of just two years. On to number nine, Pete Davidson. Throwback, I know. As Ariana once flaunted her love for the SNL comedian all over social media, RaiderOnline.com had exclusively learned that her brother Frankie and momager Joan are were terrified over their quick engagement. RaiderOnline.com readers will know after dating for less than a month, Grande and Davidson shocked the world by announcing that they were getting married. But she's not listening to anyone and is shutting out anyone who tries to wish her anything but happiness and joy. Ariana even bought a brand new $16 million New York City condo for her and her hubby-to-be to live in. And got a tattoo to honor Pete's late father whom she never met. At the same time, she revealed that she was dropping a new single appropriately titled Pete Davidson. The red flags are everywhere and Ariana seems to be one of them. To make matters worse, after announcing that Pete was sober in 2017 for eight months, the young comedian recently announced he was he has decided to still use the herb for health-related issues. Number eight, cultural appropriation accusations. Grande has been criticized for black fishing or seemingly making her skin darker and other instances of appropriation through the years. In 2019, she was accused of exploiting Asian culture by using Japanese characters in her visuals and in a misspelled tattoo. Grande was also selling merch with Japanese characters on it that was eventually taken down from her site. People on this app really don't know how to be forgiving or gentle when someone has made an innocent mistake. No one considers feelings other than their own, she wrote amid the backlash. Around the same time, Grande was accused of plagiarizing Seven Rings, Princess Nokia claimed in a social media video that Grande's hit sounded similar to Mine from her mixtape 1992. Ain't that the little song I made about brown women and their hair? Hmm, sounds about white, she hinted. In response, Grande posted and subsequently deleted via her Instagram story, white women talking about their weaves is how we're gonna solve racism. She later apologized for the out-of-pocket quip. Not funny, Ariana, I'm not even gonna laugh. Number seven, the I Hate America Donut. Grande sparked backlash in July 2015 when footage went viral of her and then boyfriend Ricky Alvarez at Wolfie Donuts in Cali. In the clip originally posted by TMZ, Grande licked pastry she didn't appear to have purchased when an employee's back was turned. When a tray of fresh donuts was brought out, she teased, what the F is that? I hate Americans. I hate America. That's disgusting. The incident took place on the 4th of July. The video was immediately met with outrage and Grande issued a statement to us apologizing for her behavior. I am extremely proud to be an American and I've always made it clear that I love my country. As an advocate for healthy eating, food is very important to me and I sometimes get upset by how freely we as Americans eat and consume things without giving any thought to the consequences that it has on our health and society as a whole, she explained, acknowledging that she should have had more discretion with her choice of words. Number six, homewrecker. Back to Ariana and Dalton, who went on double dates with Lily and Ethan. A source says Lily and Ethan also met Ariana's family together, including her mom and brother. A source close to Ariana and Ethan has previously claimed that the singer hung out with Lily and her newborn baby multiple times before her romance with her co-star was revealed, and even told those around her how much she wanted a baby one day after bonding with Lily and Ethan's. Shortly after her last visit to London, Lily learned that her husband was dating Ariana. They allegedly tried to fix their broken marriage for a short time after Lily learned of his feelings for Ariana to no avail. There was a period when they were all going to try and make and work on their marriages and put the whole thing behind them, the source said. She thought they were happy, but that did not work out because Ariana and Ethan, because Ariana and Ethan kept the affair going despite that. The insider said that Ethan then blindsided his wife by filing for divorce, insisting that the decision to officially end the marriage was made entirely by the actor. Lily did not file for divorce from Ethan. He had filed for divorce from her, they continued. 
The source noted that Lily believes that her husband was starstruck by Ariana and that he was bowled over by the glamour by being on a movie set with so many major stars for the first time. However, a second source close with knowledge of the situation defended Ethan, insisting that he and Ariana did not start dating until after he had separated from Lily. Last month, in the wake of her ex-husband filing for divorce, Lily spoke exclusively to DailyMail.com, revealing that she is attempting to move past her heartbreak and instead focus on raising her son as a single mother. Number five, serial cheater. Currently, Ariana and Ethan are on opposite coasts. Ariana headed to LA over the weekend, while Broadway actor Ethan is still in New York where he filed for divorce last week from Lily. Divorce papers for Ariana and Dalton, who she married in 2021, have not yet been filed. And that's not the first time Ariana has faced allegations of infidelity, which began with her ex, Jay Brooks, who accused the Thank You Next singer of cheating on him in 2013 with frontman for The Wanted, Nathan Sykes. Yes, I was cheated on. Yes, it does suck. Yes, I was left for another man, the post read. He went on to say it was a miserable wreck and explained, like anyone who has been cheated on, it has been tough for me, but I'm finally ready to move on. Ariana's relationship with Nathan was short-lived in the following year in 2014. Ariana started dating Big Sean while he was engaged to late Glee star Naya River. Speaking of, on to number four. Naya Rivera caught her with Big Sean. Grande dated Big Sean in 2014 after his split from former fiance, but the Glee alum claimed there was some overlap in the two romances. On the one day that he was back in LA, Sean said he didn't want to see me, but since she had a key, she let herself into his house. Rivera wrote in her 2016 memoir, Sorry Not Sorry, I walk in, go downstairs, and guess what little girl is sitting cross-legged on the couch listening to music? It rhymes with Smariana Schmonde. Yikes. Rivera remembered feeling blindsided by her and Sean's breakup. I learned that I was no longer getting married from the internet and at the same time as the rest of the world, she alleged. Not only were we not getting married, we weren't even together anymore. Grande never responded to Rivera's claims. Rivera, meanwhile, passed away in a drowning accident in July 2020. And R.I.P. Number three, not the first time. Ariana's onset romance with Ethan is far from her first brush with controversy. Since her rise to the top of the charts, Grande's career has been plagued by scandals. In July 2015, she sparked outrage online after a video of her licking donuts and later calling them disgusting and saying she hates America went viral. Along with allegedly feuding with former co-stars and being accused of plagiarism, Grande's personal relationships have raised eyebrows over the years. Naya Rivera claimed the pop star's romance with Big Sean may have overlapped with her own, and some fans have allegedly found evidence that the pattern continued in more of Grande's relationships. Following her whirlwind engagement to Pete Davidson, Grande attempted to keep her love life on the down low. She exchanged vows with Dalton in May 2021, but the couple called it quits after two years of marriage. As news broke of Grande's divorce, Us confirmed her relationship with Slater, and fans quickly tried to piece together their dating timeline. Ariana is determined to move forward. Number two, Jeanette McCurdy fallout. After her stint on Victorious, Grande teamed up with iCarly's Jeanette McCurdy for a Nickelodeon spinoff titled Sam and Cat. In her 2022 memoir, I'm Glad My Mom died, McCurdy claimed that she wasn't allowed to pursue other opportunities while working on the show, but Grande was. She alleged that Nickelodeon offered her $300,000 to not discuss her experience at the network publicly. What finally ended me was when Ariana came whistle toning in with excitement because she had spent the previous evening playing charades at Tom Hanks' house, she wrote. That was the moment I broke. She added, Ariana misses Rick in pursuit of her music career while I act with a box. I'm pissed about it and I'm pissed at her, jealous of her. Before the series was canceled in July 2014, it was put on a production hiatus amid reports that Grande was earning a much higher salary than her co-star. Grande shut down the absolutely ridiculous and false speculation via Twitter. And number one, alleged diva behavior. Since the beginning of her career, Grande has been accused of making outrageous demands and demonstrating unprofessional behavior. In 2014, rumors swirled that Grande's team had a list of off-limits topics prepared for interviews and that Grande only wanted to be photographed on her left side. She called the reports nonsense in a radio interview at the time. And Grande opened up about being labeled a diva during a 2020 sit down with Zane Lowe. I stopped doing interviews for a really long time because I felt like whenever I would get into a position where somebody would try to say something for clickbait or twist my words or blah blah blah, I would defend myself and then people would be like, oh, she's a diva. She said, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. While she felt like her opinions were often manipulated for a headline, Grande didn't see the same thing happening to men in the public eye. Let me know what you think about Ariana Grande in the comments below. Regardless, the talent is there, and I still am excited to see Wicked, especially after all this controversy around it. Number 10, Tommy Fury. 
Jake Paul has sensationally accused Tommy Fury of lying about his mother being ill to avoid a face-to-face -face press conference. The British fighter pulled out of their upcoming fight after suffering a broken rib and contracting a bacterial chest infection. The Manchester-born fighter was due to make an appearance in a press conference ahead of the fight but was forced to pull out with Paul sending his respects to his competitor at the time. It was reported that Fury returned to the UK to take care of his ill mother, which was later confirmed. Paul even sent his message of support at the press conference where he told reporters, I'm upset that Tommy's not here. I know he's taking care of his mother and I respect that as a man. I hope she's okay. But speaking to former NFL punter Pat McAfee, Paul has now accused Fury of lying so that he could avoid the press conference. Fury returned home the day before the press conference and began training with older half-brother Tyson Fury in preparation for the fight. Paul said the first told me he had a chest infection and a cough. It comes down to the kid not wanting to get into the ring. Paul also dubbed Fury as boxing's biggest bitch on his social media pages, but hopes to fight the former Love Island contestant next year. Number nine, Tana Monjo. YouTuber Tana is opening up about her strained relationship with husband Jake Paul. The influencer staged a wedding ceremony with a controversial start in Las Vegas over the summer but the couple never made the marriage legal and admit to being in an open relationship. Tana has hinted at dating Noah Cyrus, though the singer later denied that their friendship was romantic. Monjo, most famous for her disastrous TanaCon, a failed attempt to convene thousands of fans for meet and greets in June 2018, released an intimate video discussing the ups and downs of her relationship with Paul. It's crazy that I'll look at 2019 as the best career of my life, but mentally I just feel the lowest I've ever felt. She began the 40 minute video entitled, The Truth About Everything. Number eight, Fire from Disney Channel. Like many top YouTubers today, including his big brother Logan, Jake Paul got his start on Vine in 2013. And by the time the app was discontinued, Paul had over 5.3 million followers and 2 billion views on the app where his brash humor and stunts especially appealed to a young audience. This notoriety among a young demographic landed Paul a role on the Disney Channel. The series Bizarre Bark is itself a nod to the type of social media fame that Paul accrued for himself, and his character resembled his real life online persona. On the show, Paul played Dirk, host of a video segment on a YouTube esque series called Dare Me Bro, where his character took dare requests. Cringe. Paul began appearing on Bizarre Bark in 2015 when the series started, but Disney announced his exit in 2017, and Paul later revealed he had been fired. What Paul says led to his firing was a local TV news segment about his YouTube channel, which was the less Disney-friendly real-life version of Dare Me Bro. KTLA5 visited the West Hollywood neighborhood where Paul was living in July 2017 and interviewed Paul's neighbors about his YouTube stunts. They were extremely displeased. Number 7, Scamming Kids. Paul's ventures tend to revolve around a central theme. Paul tells his kid subscribers that education isn't important since he didn't do well in school but became rich and famous. And other kids should follow his lead. This might be best exemplified with Paul's widely mocked diss track about teachers, but Paul doesn't just diss education. He's attempted to talk he's attempted to start two of his own educational programs that theoretically instruct followers on how to be influential and make money through online pursuits like his own. Paul has enacted two very similar schemes themed around that idea. The first was Edfluence. Edfluence was launched in 2018 and it was supposed to be a series of videos fan could unlock for just $7 that would give them a roadmap to success as an influencer, except as many YouTubers and publications pointed out, the $7 didn't unlock the program in its entirety. It just unlocked a few videos with basic tips like have a phone and if you like makeup, create makeup videos. Number six, inappropriate videos. Many of Paul's videos have come under fire for being inappropriate for a young audience, since a lot of them revolve around sexual and violent content. In January 2018, for example, Paul uploaded a video called I Lost My Virginity, which initially had a thumbnail of Paul and then girlfriend Erica Castell posing semi-nude. 
The video was age restricted and after scrutiny from other YouTubers, Paul changed the thumbnail and eventually deleted the vlog. Paul has leaned even more into sexual content, creating a number of videos that feature famous adult film star Riley Reid. Another incident that sparked criticism was when Paul decided to tweet that anxiety was self-inflicted. Paul tweeted in February 2020, remember anxiety is created by you. Sometimes you gotta let life play out and remind yourself to be happy and that the answers will come. Number five, looting and vandalism. On May 31st, 2020, Paul and his friends posted videos to social media of themselves at the Scottsdale Fashion Square shopping mall in Scottsdale, Arizona. And Paul said he was there to take part in the joy in Paul said he was there to take part in the George Floyd protests and to film the looting and vandalism in the mall so that he could show his audience what was really going on. But police opened an investigation into his presence at the mall and he was charged with criminal trespass and unlawful assembly. Paul responded to news of the charges on Twitter writing, give me my charges and let's put the focus back on George Floyd and Black Lives Matter. Number four, federal search warrants. On August, yes, on August 5th, 2020, the FBI conducted a search of Paul's mansion in Calabasas, California, in connection with Paul's involvement in the Arizona mall raid, seized firearms from the house, according to the Washington Post. The news was first reported by TMZ, the outlet shared, the outlet shared photos of law enforcement agents and a vehicle approaching the home. The U.S. Attorney's Office later said Paul would not face federal charges related to the investigation. Number three, allegations. In April 2021, two women came forward with abuse allegations against Paul. The first was Justine Paradise, who was over half a million TikTok followers, released a 20-minute video in which she accused Paul of abuse, alleging he forced her to perform some things on his bed in his bedroom at the Team 10 house in July 2019. She said they danced and kissed consensually at first, but that it became non-consensual as Paul allegedly got physical with her. Paul denied the allegation in a Twitter statement calling it manufactured and claiming he had never had a sexual relationship with her. Another woman, actress and model Rayleigh Lolly, came forward later that month accusing Paul of groping her without consent in 2017, according to the New York Times. Number two, driving incident investigations. In May 2021, Puerto Rico's Department of Natural and Environmental Resources launched an investigation into Paul after video emerged of him driving over a protected beach on the island nation. Sea turtles commonly nest on Puerto Rico's beaches from February to August, and locals and tourists are advised to tread carefully to ensure that the protected species hatch safely. Puerto Rico's Environment Secretary Rafael told the BBC that people who break the law by riding on the beach could face fines and other penalties if applicable. Paul received significant backlash online and more than 219,000 people signed a petition urging authorities to charge him with crime. And finally, number one, Boxing World. Paul continued to leverage controversy for attention in 2022, especially in the boxing world. He's made numerous headlines and earned derision for calling out fellow boxers like Tommy Fury, Nate Diaz, and Canelo Alvarez. After beating former UFC middleweight champion Anderson Silva in a boxing match in late October, the influencer also made a derisive statement aimed at UFC president Dana White. In November 2022, Paul teased a video on Twitter suggesting he would face off in a fight against Andrew Tate, the kickboxer turned influencer who went viral for his misogynistic self-help tips. Paul previously said that Tate, who has been banned from multiple social media platforms, would be too scared to fight him or his brother Logan. Paul continues to make videos on his YouTube channel, which has maintained a consistent level of subscribers throughout the last year, according to the data and analytics website Social Blade. Starting off with number 10, Travis Scott. 10 people unfortunately lost their lives during Travis's performance at the Astroworld Festival in November 2021. And according to the Houston Fire Chief, the mass casualty event occurred when people began to compress towards the front of the stage. Following the incident, Travis, re Travis released a statement on Twitter which included, I'm absolutely devastated by what took place last night. My prayers go out to the families and all those impacted by what happened at the Astroworld Festival. And 
Jones in his first interview after the festival, Char Travis was asked by Charlemagne the God if he felt people were forcing responsibility onto him for the tragedy. And Travis responded, well, yeah, you know, I'm the face of the festival, I'm an artist, he said. So yeah, the media is, they want to put it on me. Number 9, Meghan Markle, Public Slander. During their tell-all interview with Oprah, which aired in March 2021, Meghan and Harry opened up about life in the royal family and dealing with public pressure. Meghan claimed in the midst of several rumors and attacks from tabloid stories, the royal family did not correct them. Meghan said that royal family was willing to lie to protect other members of the family, but they weren't willing to tell the truth to protect her and Harry. The royal family's so-called royal silence has caused long-term damage to the reputation of the monarchy. The silence not only failed to protect Meghan and Harry, but it also sent a clear message that speaking out against the monarchy will not be tolerated. As a result, many people have become more hesitant than ever to trust anything coming from the royal family. And that is why it's so important for the monarchy to take a stand and show their support for Meghan and Harry. The royal family needs to step up, openly condemning any form of slander against them and making it clear that such actions are unacceptable in today's society. To offer further assurance, they should also make an effort to publicly champion causes that are important to Meghan and Harry, as well as other members of the royal family. Number 8, Kanye West. Since Kim filed for divorce in February 2021 after seven years of marriage, Kanye has spoken quite a bit about the relationship and his desire to get his family back together. Back in December, he even sang for Kim to run right back to him while performing on stage at his and Drake's Free Larry Hoover concert. Kanye has appeared to move on and has been spotted with different women currently married to Bianca Sensori. In addition to his love life, Kanye also has been quite active with his music career and has been producing more tracks for upcoming releases. He continues to stay relevant in the media and remains one of the most recognizable figures in rap culture today. His unique style, positive outlook on life, and dedication to his craft have all contributed to his success in the rap game. And despite some of the turbulence in his personal life, Kanye is still an influential figure and an inspiration for many aspiring artists. Number 7, Tom Hiddleston. Several actors, including Marion Cotillard, Colin Firth, Ra Rachel Brosnahan, and Timothy Chalamet, publicly expressed regret working with Alan, who was accused of s abusing his daughter, Dylan Farrow, when she was a child. But Hiddleston, who worked with the director on 2011's Midnight in Paris, has avoided public comment, yet he still proudly displays a letter from Alan in his office as a reminder of their collaboration. Hiddleston revealed this special memento during an interview with the Sunday Times in December 2018. It's framed and it's hanging in my office, he said of the letter. I worked with Woody Allen on Midnight in Paris. I think his writing is extraordinary and there was a wonderful cast. It was an amazing experience working on that film and I remember him very fondly. He wrote me a lovely letter after working together. Hiddleston also praised Allen's body of work. It's a matter of record that he has written some of the most brilliant films and extraordinary roles for actors, Hiddleston said. You have to separate the work from the personal issues and in terms of his writing, I think it stands alone. The statement stirred controversy among many as many people believed he should be using his platform to condemn Allen instead of praising him. However, Hiddleston has never publicly condemned the director and still maintains a relationship with him. Number six, Demi Lovato. Demi criticized The Big Chill, a frozen yogurt shop in LA for selling sugar-free cookies and diet foods. Demi's Instagram story says, Finding it extremely hard to order Froyo from the Big Chill when you have to walk past tons of sugar-free cookies, other diet foods before you get to the counter. Do better, please. Cringe. The Big Chill responded on their own Instagram story explaining their menu items. We carry items for diabetics, celiac disease, vegan, and of course have many indulgent items as well. After receiving backlash and resolving things in a private conversation with the shop via Instagram DMs, Demi apologized for the post in the video. I'm sorry that I got the messaging wrong. I'm sorry that I may have disappointed some people. Demi said, I walked into a situation that didn't sit right with me. My intuition said speak up about this, so I did. Cringe. Sorry, like that is just extremely cringe of her. This response highlights Demi's voice on social media. She is not afraid to speak up when something doesn't feel right, even if it sparks controversy or backlash or you know, critical thinking skills. Um, she stands up by what she believes in and isn't discouraged by criticism. This resonates with many of her followers, apparently. And number five, Sia. 
A film she had been working on was met with criticism after the trailer dropped with people highlighting many issues, like the movie's depiction of autism and the fact that a that an actor that had no physical impairments was cast to play a character with physical impairments. The Hollywood strikes again with another film where non-disabled actors play roles involving physical impairment. Having a neurotypical play an autistic person is offensive enough. Rolling this trailer out at the start of hashtag disability history month is a kick in the bloody teeth. No captions either. Damn, that's just like a triple whammy right there. Sia initially defended the decisions in the movie and then apologized in a series of tweets that were later deleted. I listened to the wrong people and that is my responsibility. My research was clearly not thorough enough, not wide enough. She reportedly said on Twitter, concluding with I'm sorry. The movie has since been removed from streaming services. Leaving fans wondering what will happen with the film. It's a reminder that it is important to research and think critically, it's really hard for some of these people, about representation in media, especially when it comes to disability representation. Activists have called out Hollywood for its lack of disabled actors in lead roles, but this situation takes things to a whole new level. The controversy surrounding the film has ignited an important conversation about representation, and it's one that needs to be had. It's crucial for filmmakers to understand the importance of casting actors that fit the parts when it comes to representing certain things. Otherwise, films such as Sia's can end up doing more harm than good. Number four, Wendy Williams. The name itself is controversial enough. Wendy has served as a talk show host for decades, and in that time she's become well known for her direct style of asking questions. On one occasion, Williams invited actress Laverne Cox onto her show and asked about Cox's gender affirmation surgery. This sparked a lot of controversy online, with many people criticizing Williams for going too far and making it seem like someone's gender identity is up for public discussion. Although Wendy has made a name for herself with her blunt style of questioning, many people found the incident to be inappropriate and insensitive. Not the first time she's been like that. It served as an important reminder that not everyone's personal decisions should be subject to public interest or speculation. Instead, the focus should be on respecting each individual's right to privacy and personal autonomy. The incident also sparked a larger conversation about the importance of inclusivity when it comes to gender identity. It's a reminder that everyone should be respected regardless of their gender identity or expression and that no one should ever feel unwelcome because of how they identify themselves. Number three, Marilyn Manson. Goth rocker Marilyn was dropped from his record label Loma Vista Recordings after multiple women, including Westworld actress and ex-girlfriend Evan Rachel Wood, accused him of assault and sex trafficking. The 52-year-old, whose real name is Brian Hugh Warner, had previously boasted to media about keeping his partners locked up in a bad girl's room. His creepy stage persona had become a staple of shock rock, but with his longtime collaborator Twiggy Ramirez, aka Jordy White, also accused of assault, it was clear that his behavior had become more than just an act. Manson's fall from grace has been swift and decisive. He was dropped from festivals, his concerts canceled, and his merchandise pulled from shelves. And number two, Chrissy Teigen. The queen of Twitter fell hard after some of her earliest tweets came to light. They showed that in 2011, Chrissy cyberbullied TV personality Courtney Stodden, at the time just 16, for marrying 50-year-old actor Doug Hutchinson. Stodden, who announced her divorce from Hutchinson in 2020, pointed to multiple tweets Teagan sent to them at the time. Stodden revealed in an interview with the Daily Beast that the 36-year-old model and social media darling had also direct messaged them offensive remarks at the time. The toxic tweets led to Teagan, All of Me singer John Legend's wife, losing lucrative deals with Target, Bloomingdale's, and Macy's. Teagan addressed the controversy in July 2020, admitting she was ashamed and embarrassed by her past words. Since then, Teagan has apologized to Stodden, vowing to make amends going forward. And while this hasn't been easy for Teagan, it has highlighted the importance of being aware of how our words can affect others on social media, even with consequences. We must all be mindful to take responsibility for our past actions and make sure not to repeat them in the future. And number one, Justin Timberlake. Before she was finally hashtag free Britney in November, Britney had another personal victory. When the documentary Framing Britney Spears generated fresh scrutiny on how her ex-boyfriend Justin Timberlake had manipulated the media to unfairly tarnish the young pop singer's reputation following their breakup in 2002. Seriously, who can forget the Crimea River music video in which he indirectly accused the pop star of cheating? 
The 40 year old singer has since apologized following the social media backlash. But that's not the only controversy surrounding Timberlake, who rose to fame as a member of pop group NSYNC. While his music career has seen plenty of successes with albums such as Man of the Woods and the 2020 Experience, he's also been accused of cultural appropriation multiple times over the course, over the course of his three decade career. In the early 2000s, Timberlake was accused of using African American culture to help establish his solo career and has been criticized for lyrics that have perpetuated stereotypes throughout the years. Number 10, her predatory past, American rapper Cardi clapped back at allegations of drugging and robbing men after she remarked that the world is full of predators. On April 10, the star took to her Twitter handle to warn parents about predators everywhere around their kids. The mother of two stated that the predators prey on the innocent and can be anyone around us, like our neighbors, our school teachers, even people with money, power, and our churches. She concluded the tweet by adding that parents should talk to their kids about boundaries. As per Complex, Cardi B was slammed by several online users who reminded her of the time she admitted her past as a dancer had incidents of drugging and robbing men. She then reportedly held an Instagram live session to explain herself. However, many were not exactly convinced by the rapper's defense and slammed her for making those comments. People were slamming the rapper over a 2019 video that started making rounds where she told stories from her past. She revealed that when she was at the peak of her career, she persuaded men to join her in a hotel room before drugging and robbing them. Number nine, her choice of words. When asked by a Twitter user to reconsider her wording while explaining how predators constantly surround children, Cardi B slammed at your happy place nine on Twitter by stating she knew exactly what she meant. After Cardi was slammed online for making comments on predators being everywhere around the world, the rapper held an Instagram live to address the accusations and noted that her sneaking money from customers during her days as a dancer is different from urging kids to commit unspeakable acts. She also slammed people for calling her the wrong messenger because of her motherhood and being abused as a teenager. Number 8, WAP Lyrics. Cardi B's hit song WAP featuring Megan Thee Stallion made a lot of headlines when it first came out in 2020. Though many of her fans loved the song, critics such as conservative commentator Ben Shapiro spoke out against the song's vulgar lyrics. When the rappers performed their chart topper at the 2021 Grammy Awards, many stars were divided. Mary J. Blige and Pusha T were among those who publicly supported the performance. Candace Owens and John Cooper criticized the sexual nature of their performance. But despite the backlash, this song will go down in the history books because the accompanying music video accumulated 26 million views within 24 hours of it being on YouTube. Several celebrities make a cameo in the music video including Kylie Jenner, Normani, and Rosalia. With a successful song and viral music video, Cardi B has solidified her place as one of the top female rappers in the music industry. Her witty raps and funny attitude have only helped her career rise to incredible heights and it looks like she's not slowing down anytime soon. With new music coming out and collabs with some of the biggest names in the industry, Cardi is sure to remain at the top of the charts for years to come. Number 7, Cardi B versus Nicki Minaj. Cardi and Nicki have been at odds for several years now, though Nicki initially supported Cardi's first major single, Bodak Yellow. Their budding relationship quickly went south after they were both featured on the Migos' song, Motorsport. On social media, they seemed to allude to there being a controversy over Nicki's verse on the song. Whatever bad blood may have been between them seemed to be water under the bridge when they were spotted speaking at the 2018 Met Gala. A few months later though, the pair got into a physical altercation at the Harper's Bazaar icon party. In October 2018, Nicki claimed that she won't be discussing this nonsense anymore. Fans have continued to speculate that there is still beef. Cardi is usually known for her witty remarks and funny demeanor. She often speaks her mind on social media, which has gained her a diehard fan base. Although there have been times when she's gone too far with her comments, she is usually able to make light of this situation with humor. Her signature catchphrase, oh, has become immortalized in the hip hop culture and is used by fans around the world. Cardi continues to dominate the music industry with her chart topping hits and her colorful personality. Whether it be defending herself on social media or slaying on stage like she does, Cardi always knows how to make a statement. Her witty lyrics and fire attitude have made her an icon in the rap game. And no matter what, Cardi is sure to keep her fans entertained with her larger than life personality. In 2019, she won the Grammy for Best Rap Album, making her the first solo female rapper to ever win this award. 
a testament to how far she has come and how much of an impact she has had on the music industry. Number six, Cardi B versus Madonna. Cardi and Madonna had their own spat on social media. Madonna and Cardi met for the first time at Madonna's 2018 Oscars party, and in an Instagram post, Cardi said that she was thrilled to have met her real life idol. When Madonna celebrated the 30th anniversary of the release of her 1992 sex book, the pop star wrote on her Instagram story, now Cardi B can sing about her WAP. You're welcome. Cardi didn't appreciate Madonna's use of the clown emoji at the end of her message, and she replied that Madonna could make her point without putting clown emojis and getting slick out the mouth. Fortunately, the stars were able to work it out. Cardi tweeted, I talked to Madonna, it was beautiful, have a great day and drive safely, y'all. It looks like the two icons have made peace. Cardi B is known for her sense of humor and never shies away from engaging with her fans. She loves interacting with them on social media, whether it's responding to their comments or creating funny videos. Her Instagram page is full of lighthearted content that helps keep her followers entertained. Cardi often posts short skits about her relationships and motherhood, which always gets a lot of laughter from her loyal fans. She is also unafraid to stand up for herself and will quickly shut down anyone who tries to come after her. If you're looking for some laughs, Cardi is one of the best people to follow on social media. She is always full of surprises and is never afraid to get a little silly. Whether it's her hilarious videos or quick-witted comments, Cardi knows how to keep her fans entertained with her contagious sense of humor. Number five, Cardi B versus Offset. Cardi and her husband, fellow rapper Offset, have endured many ups and downs throughout the relationship. They got married in September 2017 after less than a year of dating. During Cardi's first pregnancy with their daughter Culture, the couple faced a cheating scandal. Videos emerged of Offset in bed with another woman in December 2017 and January 2018. Cardi decided to stick by Offset before announcing that they had split in December 2018. A couple of months and several apologies later, the couple was back together. In September 2020, Cardi filed for divorce. By October, they were back together and Cardi gave birth to their son, Wave, in September 2021. Cardi's witty and humorous comebacks on social media have become her signature trademark. As she's often referred to in interviews as the realest person, Cardi is never afraid to speak her mind, whether it be about relationships, money, or just life in general. She always speaks her opinion honestly and without a filter. Number four, pleading guilty. In September 2022, Cardi B pleaded guilty to third degree assault and second degree reckless endangerment for a fight that took place at a New York strip club back in 2018. She was sentenced to 15 days of community service. She released a statement after her sentencing that said, these moments don't define me and they are not reflective of who I am now. Cardi B's unique and witty personality has been one of the key reasons behind her success. She speaks her mind, doesn't shy away from controversy, and shares her stories with a comedic twist. She rose to fame in 2015 after releasing two critically acclaimed mixtapes that include popular singles such as Lil Mama, Bodak Yellow, and Money. Since then, she has gone on to release three studio albums, all of which have debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. In the past few years, Cardi has become one of the most influential voices in hip hop and pop music, with her songs being streamed billions of times online and in radio airwaves. She's also become a fashion icon with her style being copied by fans around the world. Cardi's success story is one that proves that you can come from humble beginnings and make it big in life. Her courage to take risks and trust her own voice is an inspiring example of what determination and hard work can do for anyone. Number three, culture's birthday expenses. Aside from her career, fans know that Cardi is a doting mother to her two children. This may not be a controversy, but obviously there were haters questioning why she decided to spend her money on her own child. When her daughter culture turned four, Cardi and Offset faced backlash for spending a lot of money to celebrate. Cardi and Offset gave culture a stack of 50K, a family visit to Candytopia, and a mermaid-themed birthday party. Critics often call Cardi and Offset out for the expensive gifts that they give their children. Cardi has explained that although she wants her kids to know the value of hard work, she also wants them to have a better childhood than she did. Cardi knows that money can't buy happiness, but it does give her the opportunity to make sure culture and Cody have a safe place to call home. Number two, getting in between Quavo and Offset's beef. Cardi has been put in the middle of Offset and Quavo's beef. Since Takeoff passed away, the cousins and former groupmates have still not settled their feud. Quavo performed a tribute for his nephew Takeoff at the 2023 Grammys and allegedly barred Offset from participating. The pair reportedly got into a physical altercation backstage and in a leaked clip, Cardi seems to chastise both of them for their behavior. In the clip, Cardi screams, both of y'all are wrong, both of y'all. This is not right. 
Offset has denied that there was a fight, however, Cardi isn't afraid to speak her truth and she made sure the cousins knew it. And finally, number one, Savage. The rapper caused an uproar on social media for tweeting and then deleting a photo of two Hasidic Jewish men shortly after learning that she would not be charged for an incident that took place during her recent concert. The Grammy winning singer threw her microphone into the crowd at her July 29 performance in Las Vegas after someone threw a drink on her on stage. A scene in video shared on social media, a woman who said she was hit with the microphone filed a police report for battery, but the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department said in a statement on Thursday that due to insufficient evidence, no charges will be filed against the rapper. But that is all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more news on your fave celebrities, and I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.